the Compaq Desk Pro EN. These are business class systems from the year 2000. As you can see by the sticker, this system would have came with either Windows 2000 or Windows 98 Second Edition. Obviously, having a Pentium 3 makes these systems obsolete. But the question is, just how obsolete are they? Looking at the COA, we can see that this one did indeed ship with Windows 98. Opening this case is really interesting. There's these two tabs and you have to push them, but it's not really clear which way you push. But then eventually you figure out that the bezel can only come off one way. First thing you notice is the drive cage, where the upgraded DVD-ROM drive lives, and the 160GB Seagate drive. The Seagate drive I pulled out of a DVR. It's pretty fast. certainly a lot better than the 10.2 GB hard drive that was in this system. The hard drive cage is attached to a hinge so you can lift it up revealing more of the computer. Normally the hard drive and the optical drive would get their own IDE cable, but I decided to take that out and just use this slightly longer than usual IDE cable, because it has reduced surface area except for where it attaches to the drives therefore it can get more airflow and therefore heat dissipation keeps the fans down. I was especially concerned about these capacitors because with the other cables sitting on them they, they were in very warm. Tipping up the proprietary 120 watt power supply we see the proprietary shenanigans on this computer never end. The power connector is very strange. This computer only has two Molex connectors and one floppy connector. It seems to be a fairly well-built power supply. It wouldn't surprise me if you can actually draw a bit more than 120 watts, but I'm not going to try to push it. And for whatever reason, you do have a CD audio connector even though it's probably useless. It has a solenoid for the case lock, which I haven't seen before. And also it has pretty impressive onboard audio. The speaker has good bass, I must say. There's our very typical of the era Saga 370 cooler that's cooling the Pentium 3 1100 MHz. Sadly, the 1100 MHz model only has a 100 MHz front side bus which does limit our RAM to that speed. Otherwise, the whole computer would operate at a 33 MHz faster bus speed. The RAM has been upgraded to 512 MB. There's a third slot, and I was hoping that I could get it to 768 MB, but due to the chipset limitation of the Intel 815, that is not possible. Here we see the onboard cache for the Intel 815 video circuitry, and we also see that it was a possibility to get this thing ordered with a soldered, dedicated GPU. However, this one just has pads. The expansion slots simply lift out of the computer where you can see the three PCI slots. One holds our USB 2 card, the other holds the ATI Radeon 9250. There's one free slot for future possibilities. Alright, let's get this show on the road. I've equipped a Dell monitor so we can be able to see things, and when we turn it on, we'll see the lovely compact boot splash. Compared to the other ones I've seen, this one has a slight 3D look to it. And then we see the Windows Vista boot splash. This is not by any means a very fast computer to boot or really do anything with Windows Vista on it, but that's not Windows Vista's fault. It's because of the such low-end hardware. But I'll give it to Windows Vista. It runs very well for what it is. And by Service Pack 2, Windows Vista was pretty solid.
as we can see, this is Windows Vista Home Basic, which has a more limited amount of features, but is more suitable for lower-end hardware. This has been stripped significantly from the default Windows Vista install, with several services disabled and the Windows Basic theme disabled in, in favor of the classic theme. Opening up system properties, we see that our base score is 1.0, and also that our processor is so old that it's not actually detected by Windows Vista. Instead, the CPU ID is just listed. And we can see that our base score is 1.0 on the graphics, which is probably because I'm using a Windows XP driver with the graphics, and Windows Vista probably doesn't like that. Now, for basic things like Office, it's actually pretty nice. The last version for Windows Vista of LibreOffice just happens to be able to run without SSE2 as well, so... And it runs well, might I add. And if you want to edit spreadsheets, you can do just that. For web browsing, we have my browser of choice, which is New Moon 27 with some post-deprecated security patches. It's been compiled by RoyTam1 on MSFN, and it works on Windows Vista. Loading Discord, we find that it's, it's pretty slow. Sometime later, we start to get a user interface. There is a lot of screen flashing going on, which is very annoying, but there is some way to disable it. I'll try to let you guys know when I figure that out again. Although sometimes, Discord just does that. And then you gotta reload the page and you can continue typing your messages. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Loading up darksky.net, we can get a look at our weather information actually pretty well. The only reason the map is slow to load here is actually my internet. I'm surprised how smoothly that site runs because it's pretty modern looking. Loading YouTube, this is where all old computers come to die. Playing YouTube is no small feat on old hardware. As we can see, it's initially struggling to play just 240p, but eventually it smooths out. Loading that same initial test video into VLC, we find that it's a lot more enjoyable because we get to watch it in a higher resolution and with less stutters. A bite the entire time, the CPU is still pretty saturated. You're definitely not streaming 480p without an upgraded processor. And playing DVDs or local 480p files is actually quite possible. I suspect that Blu-rays would be a total mess because those are HD video. I don't even have a Blu-ray player anyway. To play the DVD, I'm using the last version of Media Player Classic Home Cinema, available for non-SSE2 processors. The DVD drive is actually pretty quiet in this system, which is pretty nice for watching movies.
playing mods and such using OpenMPT is also quite possible. Only very complicated mods would experience a slowdown. On the next section, you'll see how this thing performs with games. Enjoy the footage of my horrible gameplay.